Good morning and welcome to today's reflection. My name's Alex, one of the curates here in the parish of St Mary's and St John's. It's good to be with you this morning as we turn to look at Luke chapter 20 verses 9 to 19, um, the parable of the tenants. And before we look into what God has to say to us this morning, I'll open with prayer. Father, as we come to your word this morning, I pray that you will give us open hearts and open minds to receive what you have to say to us as, as your word. By your spirit, I pray that you will open our minds to see the wonders and the glory of who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. And this morning we come to the parable of the last tenants, and it really is quite a hard-hitting parable. Um, so much so that it's actually in Matthew, Mark and Luke. It's clearly a parable that speaks of many gospel truths, the truths of who God is. And that's really what I think it really speaks to us about. And as we look at verse 9, it's, we read this. Jesus went on to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard, rented it to some farmers and went away for a long time. And actually, that reminds us of God. That's God came and he created the world. He's so generous that he gave it to, to Adam and Eve and to people to, to be a part of his, his plan. He's so generous and giving. Um, and it, the harvest time, there's a generous harvest, there's fruit, the, there's fruit. Um, again, God provides. He's so generous. And we see this as I look out my window, I see the green and the gardens. Um, maybe not my own garden. That's not that green and not that not that lush. But maybe if you have a nice garden, just look at that and be reminded of God's love and his provision and his generosity. He's so generous gives us food and beauty and love what a god the god who provides that's who that's who he is and he calls us humans to work a part as part of it imagine this that the god of the universe who created everything who guides the whole of creation calls us to be a part of his work in this world but yet this parable really exposes the truth of the human heart. As how often we see God's world and his provision as our own. Isn't that the truth of the human heart? That God provides and we seize it as if it was our own. And God comes to, to, to meet, meet the renters of this land and he sends, he sends a messenger but then the messenger is beaten and treated shamefully and sent away empty handed. And they and isn't that the and do you know what though this tells us? God sends three messengers. God's so generous. He's so patient. And we learn that God is patient in this parable. He sends three. But actually he's so patient that he even sends his son to tell them. To speak to them. He's so generous that even after three, three of his messengers are beaten, killed and shamefully treated. He would even risk sending his son. That's the God of the Bible. Gen the generous provider. The God who calls us to work, be a part of it. That God. He even sends his son, his heir, we read. And as we, and when you look at Hebrews, um, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. Um, and and the writer speaks of him of Jesus as the, the his son whom he's appointed heir of all things. Jesus is the heir of all things, and yet they kill him. This parable is just before the tr Jesus's death, his crucifixion, and many messengers have been killed. John the Baptist's head was chopped off, and so and many others. And then Jesus, the son, the heir, will be treated in the same way. God is patient. God is merciful. He risks sending his own son that he, because he loves us so much. And yet 
We hoard his wealth as if it was our own. And you only have to look at global poverty to see the poor distribution of food and wealth. Of how we gather so much as if it was ours and not God's. We forget that basic principle of life. That God is the provider, the owner and the, the landowner. And yet, we like the renters in the parable of the tenants, seize it as if it was our own. And in this, par this parable then, so we've learned about God, the provider, the generous one, the merciful one, the gracious, loving, patient one. But yet we learn a truth that's far more uncomfortable to the modern ear. That God, as the owner, is also the judge. And that God does have a limit. He's so generous and patient. He'll, his mercy will extend to the generations as it has. He's so patient. But then we read in verse 15, What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them after they've killed the messengers of the son? And verse 16 says, He will come and kill those tenants and give the vineyard to others. Others who will treat it as gods. When the people heard this, they said, God forbid. And wow, isn't that just what people think when they hear that God might have an opinion? That God is just and good? That God's goodness is important to him, his righteousness, his holiness? Jesus looked at them directly and asked, Then what is the meaning of which is written? This is written in Psalm 118. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone. We hear that in our stories. And if we trust in Jesus, then we build our lives on that cornerstone. We align ourselves to him. And that's what God is saying here. Align yourselves to, to the cornerstone. Build your life on me. Don't hoard it as if you're your own, but align your life to me. But in verse 18, Jesus says, everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces. Anyone whom it falls will be crushed. And how tempting it could be for me to not talk about verse 18. But that, the cornerstone which we are called to build our lives upon, will become a stumbling block to those who do not trust and in God's provision. As if the what God has given is God's and give God his glory. God wants our love and our worship and our lives. He doesn't want us, he hasn't given us things to hoard for ourselves. He's given them to be generous, maybe to follow in his generous provision. He, he, God is a cat God of generous provision and yet we so tempted to do the opposite. God calls us to be generous providers like him. And the God of love and patience is also the God who will judge. He will judge those, he says, who turn from him, who reject the son and reject his messages of love and hope. How tempting it would be to forget that God is God. And that's not the only time it's mentioned. You just read the Gospels. Read a Gospel and look for Jesus talking about judgment. Read all of Luke's Gospel as one. And you will see that God is patient, God is kind, God is loving, God is merciful, God is generous. God is so, so merciful, so patient, so good. But God is also the king and he will judge those who take what is rightfully his as their own. Build your life on the cornerstone. That's what Jesus says. Don't let it cause you to trip and stumble Lord we give you glory for who you are and help us to live lives as you would see fit help us to take our resources as yours and to live with them as if they're yours for your glory and not for our own help us not to to be selfish and hoard what is rightfully yours Amen.